Hey guys, welcome back to another episode right here in Japan. We're pretty much still in lockdown here because of COVID-19 and all, but uh, at least we have the game room. So that means everyone should be busy working on their backlog. I know I've been busy with mine. So I got a message the other day from Gamer Wayne asking if I'd make a video about my top five best looking consoles uh, right here in the game room. So here I am and let's get started. Number five, the Sega Dreamcast. Released in North America September 9th, 1999. Not only was it Sega's last console, but also the best looking console in my opinion. It's got this smooth, comfortable look, not too bulky, wide or tall. It can easily slide into your grandma's living room and blend in slightly. And let's not forget about the unique controller that uh, Sega had came up with for the Dreamcast. It looks wicked cool and surprisingly fits nicely in my hands. It was indeed a console ahead of its time with its built-in modem for internet and online play. And maybe if the internet back then was more accessible to people's homes, this would have caught on faster and changed the fate of Sega altogether. Maybe. Number four. It's Sega again with a third-party JVC release known as the V-Saturn. The original Sega Saturn was released in North America May 11th, 1995. Now those off-white original Sega Saturns look really cheap next to this guy. Yeah, this is the guy she told you not to worry about. To me, this console really stands out in a crowd. And let's not get into the capabilities this thing had with all of its accessories. That's right, even the Saturn had online capabilities for multiplayer games such as the Genesis did and the later Dreamcast. But I think this guy looks far better. Number 3. We're still going back in time with another third party console manufactured by Sharp. It's the Nintendo Sharp Twin Famicom. Released only in Japan July 1st, 1986. When I first moved to Japan and I seen one of these, I thought to myself, holy crap, this is a relic. Then I realized it came out in 1986. I guess that makes me a relic too. It was love at first sight, like we were destined to be together. I mean, look at this thing. Twins are a dream come true. The twin Famicom is really just the Famicom and the Famicom disk system molded together into one piece of hardware. Much like the Sega Genesis and the Sega CD. And check out the different variations in color and design these have. I loved learning about the system and it makes for a great conversation piece just sitting on the game room, but it does have its flaws. For instance, the built-in controllers just uh, aren't very long. Number two, the Virtual Boy. Now remember, we're not going by functionality, we're going by looks. Released in North America August 14th, 1995. If this thing even looks slightly cool today, then you know it was super cool way back then. I mean, I can't imagine the amount of kids begging their parents to, to get this thing, unless they played it first. The Virtual Boy is a red-hot 32-bit tabletop portable video game console. Take that info as you will, but much like the Twin Famicom, it makes for a great conversation piece. But that's besides the point, this thing still looks awesome. Uh, it looks super futuristic, especially for its time, and realistically, if it was sitting in your, in your living room, most people probably wouldn't think it was anything other than just another VR headset. But actually, it's, it's kind of old now. Number one. Now, this is a no-brainer for me. Uh, taking the spot for number one best-looking console in my game room has to be the Panasonic Q. Released only in Japan, December 13th, 2001, this console looked like it fell from outer space and landed on its feet. It's almost like it's made from materials out of this world. Not only does it play GameCube games, but it also plays these DVDs, and it functions as a mirror. It even has neat lighting and a little, little backlit LCD that greets you every time you start it up. She looks great, but even better when I'm standing in front of her. The Q is known to be quite fragile, so I always sweat when moving her around in the game room, but, you know, I'm a pretty careful person. As a game console, she surely is unique in design, but honestly, if she just sat in your living room, most people probably wouldn't like to look twice at it, because they'd think it was just another flashy DVD player. 
I mean, it kind of gives off that vibe, you know, these chrome looking DVD players you have out there. It kind of like, uh, it blends in with those a little bit. But for those of us who know what it is, that it's a game console and it's rare, um, we can appreciate it for what it looks like. This thing is rare, expensive, and really hard to find in working condition at that. So I always feel very lucky to have it in my game room. And thanks to Gamer Wayne for selling it to me a couple years back, and uh, I guess he recently got bit by the collector bug again because now he's asking me questions about it. Hopefully this whole COVID thing wears off pretty soon so we can start hanging out again and go game chasing around Japan, and or just sit around and chat about video games we enjoy or some hidden gems that we might like. I know I've got a closet right now full of stuff that I really want to show off and I'll be getting to very soon. Alright guys, so let me know what your top 5 favorite good looking console is in your game room and if you'd like to see my top 5 ugliest. Alright guys, stay safe and thanks for watching.